Welcome to this tutorial on Satellite 3D version 3. Today we're going to cover the animation tool. To get started, just jump into the animation tab here at the bottom. If you don't see this tab, you want to make sure that you have the cinema version of Satellite 3D version 3. I'm going to expand this tab upward so that we have more room to work with. Let's cover the basic tools that we'll find in the animation tab. First, whatever item we have selected will show up here to begin adding keyframes to. So if I were to select the camera, I would see the camera show up here. If I were to select the model, the model, and so on. At the top left, we have the button for our timeline editor. This is the main page that we'll be working on. The next button is our curve editor. That's where we can go in and finesse the curve of the keyframes. We'll talk about this in depth in a future tutorial. The next button to the right is the automatic keyframe recording button. And thirdly, we have the insert keyframe button, which you'll be using most often. You can also add keyframes on any item that's in the list by just simply pressing this plus button here. At the bottom, you can set the duration of your video length. The next button lets you render the video directly from this page. And the delete button allows you to delete animation for a selected item. In the center, we have playback controls. We have the pause play button, go to next keyframe, go to the end, and the opposite, we have go to previous keyframe and go to the beginning. On the right side, we'll see the zoom feature. To the left, zooms in. To the right, zooms out. You can also maneuver the timeline with your scroll wheel. You can zoom in by scrolling in and out by scrolling out. The zoom function will anchor to wherever your mouse is. So if I want to maintain my view of the left side, I'll just move my mouse over here and zoom in or zoom out. If I'd like to zoom in on the end of my timeline, I'll just move my mouse over here and zoom in and zoom out. You can also middle mouse click and drag to move the timeline up, down, left, or right as you need. So let's go ahead and start animating. For my personal style, a lot of the times I'll animate backwards. I already have the set exactly the way I want it to be, so I'm gonna move my playhead to the end of the timeline, and I'm going to go ahead and start inserting keyframes for all the items that I would like to move. First, I'll select my camera. Once I've done that, I can come down here and press the plus button next to it to add a keyframe to my camera. After I add a keyframe, I can use this toggle to see all of the different properties that are keyframed. By default, it keyframes everything just to make things easy, but you can choose to delete various items or adjust them. Next, I wanna add a keyframe for my key light. So I'm gonna click the key light, press the plus button, and I'm in. Next, I'd like to do my background light, so I'll select that, press the plus button, and so on for all additional items. A shortcut for adding keyframes is to have your item selected and press I on your keyboard, and it'll allow you to insert keyframes for the selected objects or for existing tracks. I'll go ahead and say for selected objects. And now I have those positions saved at the end of my timeline. Next, I'm gonna move my playhead backwards in time a bit, maybe just a couple of seconds for now. We can always adjust the timing later. Now what I'm going to do is change the position of all of the items in my scene to animate onto. So I'm gonna zoom out here and pull my camera away from my subject. I'm also going to change my focal length to make it more wide angle so I can get more context of my scene. Once I have my camera in position, I'm going to insert another keyframe by clicking here or pressing I on my keyboard. Next, I'm going to take my key light and maybe I'll push it way over here, out of the way, I'm also gonna turn the power down on the light and then I'll add a keyframe for that as well. Next, I'll take my background light and move it out of the way and turn the power down on it as well and set another keyframe. This time I'll use I. And I'll do the same exact thing for the kickers. I'll move them over here, turn the power all the way down and maybe I'll extend them up high just for fun. And insert a keyframe and do the same thing for the other side. Next, I have the reflector here in the middle. I'm just going to take it like this and move it down below the stage just so it pops out of the ground. I think that's kind of funny. So I'll keyframe that. Then finally, I'm going to keyframe my background. I'll go ahead and change the length of it until it's rolled all the way up and I'll keyframe that as well. Now, if I move my playhead, all the things will start to move together in unison to create my final animation, which I think looks really cool. So we have everything animating on, and I think it's looking really good, but what if I want to animate my model? Well, it's exactly the same thing. I'll just select my model, move the playhead to where I want to start my first keyframe, and hit the plus button. Then I can move back however far I'd like, and I can start adjusting her pose. I'm gonna zoom in, and perhaps I want her eyes to be closed. So I'm gonna choose her eyes, close them, and then I'm gonna select another keyframe. And as you can see, her eyes open as the lighting comes into frame. 
And we can do that with absolutely everything on the model, but we haven't talked about posing yet, so I will leave that for a future tutorial. But if you're not excited about animating every single thing about your character, hit delete to delete my animations, and I'm going to bring my playhead to the front and find a preset animation that I like. To do a preset animation, you click the plus button on the animation control here. If I hit the plus button, we'll see a new animation pose track that we can drag these into. To see the preset animations, just click on the person icon here, and it'll pull up a window with all of the different preset animations available to you. In this case, I'm going to choose idle one, just because I think it's kind of fun, and I'm gonna drag it right here into the scene. This makes it look like the model is actually alive. So I'm gonna go ahead and push play, and we will see what she's doing as the animation is happening. If that's not quite enough movement, I can add in another preset animation and just drag it into position. Let's try this one. And that looks pretty good. So you have your animation finished, it looks really great, you're happy with the results, and now it's time to render. And there are two ways to do this. The first way is to just click this button on the bottom left. This one here will pull up the render dialog and let you render the scene that you're working on. But there is a way to render multiple scenes at once so you can let your computer run throughout the night while you're sleeping or getting coffee. So I'm gonna cancel this, and instead I'm gonna go to the render module. Here, we can select multiple scenes to render. So I'm gonna hold Command and select both of my scenes together. I just have a variation of blue and orange in this case. And all I have to do is simply press Render Video at the bottom. It's gonna pull up with this dialog box where I can choose the resolution of my renders. So I can go up to 4K and I can change my quality from low, which is still very good, to medium, which is what I use most of the time, High is a bit better calculation, and if you wanna go all out, you can go to Ultra and choose your AI denoising preference. Medium is usually a good start. In my case, I'll stick with Medium. And that's really about it. Just press Render. It's gonna ask you to choose a folder to put it into. In this case, I'll do the Downloads folder, hit Open, and it'll begin rendering your videos. While rendering, you'll see which frame it's rendering, which sample of that frame it's rendering, and how much estimated time is remaining for this render. And that's the basics of how to get started animating in Satellite 3D version 3. And before we go, I have one last tip for you. If you want to animate multiple objects combined, you can actually put them into a group and change that group into an axis. So let me show you that real quickly with the lights. So in my set list, I'm going to go ahead and find all of my lights and drag them into my axis folder. The great thing about this is that all of the animation of each object in the axis remains active. Now, this isn't an axis yet, this is still a folder. You can create an axis by clicking this button here, or you can right click a folder and say convert to axis. So I'm going to do the same thing, start at the end and create a keyframe, move to the very beginning and create another keyframe after I've rotated it 360 degrees. Now I'll set another keyframe and let's play this back just to see what it looks like. And that's getting a little bit crazy and it's sort of impractical. I would obviously have to put more effort into this, but you get the idea. You can animate things together and separately and group them to be able to have full control over arcs and curves. And I know I said one more bonus tip, but there is one more thing I'd like to share is that once you've set your animation keys, you can actually use these handles to control the curve. So I can have this move over here and move over here and now my camera is gonna move in an S-curve towards my subject. So that's about it for animating with Satellite 3D. There's a lot more to this, so stay tuned for future tutorials that go more in depth on curves and advanced features, but for now, that should get you going, and we're excited to see what you make. With that, have fun, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.